Right here, uh, this is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're live, day two, Oracle Open World, in the Moscone Center. John Furrier, my colleague and co-host. Um, it's a good interview. Uh, NetApp, just really focusing on business value. Very SAP-like in that regard. That guy, that guy was smooth. Yeah. I mean, he was good. I'm going to try to get them to get Billy Bean to come in the Cube, author of Moneyball, obviously the movie's out with Brad Pitt. Um, he's here giving a talk at the NetApp booth, and I got to tell you, um, you know, NetApp not known for their marketing, um, but getting Billy Bean here uh, to do a guest appearance in the, in their booth, obviously big data as a great focus, timely, is great timely, you know, good local. move, great move by NetApp, and that's great marketing because when you think about uh, the movie Moneyball, Dave. Um, and, and, this, and I hope we get him on an interview because um, that's good. Billy Bean is the author of, uh, I'm not the author, um, he's the subject Michael of the Lewis, book, Michael Lewis Mon uh, book. Uh, Moneyball by Michael yeah. Lewis. Um, but Billy Bean was the, the, the general manager of The A's, which now the movie's out the with The protagonist Brad, in the book, really. Who, who, who first ran the numbers, and it's a fascinating book. Uh, the book's phenomenal. But Moneyball was about how he used big data to take the A's from the seller with no payroll to compete against the likes of the Yankees and the Red Sox, who had huge payrolls. Essentially, like that's Oracle, right? The Yankees would be like Oracle, right? And the A's would be like a startup. Right, so he used essentially big data techniques to um, essentially compete. And this is what big data is all about. He used stats and information, analytics, to get a competitive advantage. The amazing thing about that, that book is Billy Bean was an unreal athlete, right? And he was the one when you went to the, whatever the equivalent of the baseball, you know, football combine is in baseball. You go there, he ran the fastest, jumped the highest, tracked down the fly balls. You know, the scouts would see him there, their jaws would drop, I gotta have that guy. And he played, I think he played for a number of Mets organizations and others. He was a bust in the major leagues. He had all the skills, all the tools, just was a total bust. And, and then through a series of... Well, Billy Bean is the legend, obviously the, the book and the, the, now the movie. And so by NetApp having him in the booth at 2 o'clock today, if you're at Oracle Open World, you're watching this, go to the NetApp booth because Billy Bean will be doing a, a speech from 2 to 2.30. We're going to try to get him here at this table and talk to us about big data techniques um, as an analyst. That's the opportunity today. So uh, this is why I'm bullish on Hadoop and, and big data. Yeah, and anyone, anyone in the business, an analyst, they don't have to be a programmer, can use their knowledge and use big data techniques in real time to get a competitive advantage. So there's a Billy Bean out there in every organization to make their company successful. And I think it's a brilliant move by NetApp to market Billy Bean here at Oracle Open World when the subject is big data. And, Hats and, off to NetApp. And data is all about finding value, and value sometimes isn't necessarily saying, oh yeah, this is, you know, like for instance, the Red Sox, Manny Ramirez paid him, whatever, 180 million. Uh, uh, Carl Crawford paid, paid him $20 million a year. That's, you know, that, that's obvious. Anybody can go do that. What, what, what Billy Bean used the analytics for was to find value, you know, where others didn't see it. And statistics and data were how that occurred. He was an analyst, and, and that's exactly why big data is relevant. And, uh, you know, things like... they never won anything with that, with that approach. They, you know, they, they got there. They right? made the postseason, they, post never, they, they won, the won the division. The, you know, the premise in the book was when you get to the postseason, you know, anything can happen. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. maybe that's where the expensive players step up. <laughs> that's why they're paid so much, I don't know. Well, um, anyway, good interview by NetApp, yeah, great job so, there. Uh, that, was, that was good, thank you. Um, but we're here at Oracle Open World. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and we're live on the air. We've had over 150,000 people watch today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we're covering all the news from Oracle Open World in San Francisco, California, where the, the show is so big that the city of San Francisco has shut down Howard Street and the surrounding areas to accommodate Oracle Open World and Java One. And Java One is at the Hilton, other part of town, but it's one big, huge event, hard to get a table at a restaurant, everyone's having a great time, good business discussions, great networking, a lot of partying, serious amount of, of high tech uh, and, and energy going on here, Dave. Yeah, a lot of business going on. You know, it was interesting, we got a couple of events last night. It's interesting to, to note the degree to which Oracle partners in the field with you know the big consultants, the Deloitte's, the KPMG's, you know, the Accenture's, I mean, those guys are associated with the money, the wallets, right? I mean, a lot of suits, uh, a lot of big deals going on. Um, 
you know, a lot of high-end consulting activities. That's that's really Oracle's space. That's what they're all about. So we've had a lot of guests on today. We had Juniper Networks. You just talked to NetApp. We had Juniper Networks. We've had um, a lot of good guests come on. We had Cute Logic earlier. We talked about the iPhone Apple announcement um, covering in Cupertino, California. So. You know, we're in San Francisco, Oracle Open World. Apple has the announcement of the iPhone 4S in Cupertino. We've been covering it live. Tons of stories on siliconangle.com. Alex Williams, Clint Finley, Kristen Nicole are out there covering everything. All of our writers working hard, art, kit. Uh, we got on the Wikibon side, we got Jeff Kelly, Stu Miniman's at Interop right now covering uh, Interop. So give us the update on what Stu's up to on Wikibon side. So what's going on in Wikibon, Yeah, Dave? Stu covers virtualization and networking for us, and, and Interop, as you know, long time historical networking show. It's all Stu's peeps, he's got to be there. Uh, he'll be covering convergence. Um, you know, I actually didn't ask Vaughn about FlexPod, that's you know, their convergence strategy, but v, you know, V-Block, HP converged into infrastructure, FlexPod, I would even put you know, some of Oracle's, X, I guess, Exologic products in there. Um, all about converging networking and storage and servers, that's, that's Stu's area, Jeff Kelly really focused on big data. Of course, David Floyer, Nick Allen focused on virtualization and, and cloud. Um, you know, working with SiliconANGLE, cloud, Mobile, big data, really the three pillars that that, that we focus on, and um, they're good ones to be in. So you know, there's there's a lot of news going on. Honestly, not all good news. Um, I just got a tweet from um, my good friend on Twitter right now, Tech Stock Radar, great guy. Um, told me Acme Packet provided third quarter financial update. They're down huge, and according to Tech Radar. Tech Stock Radar, which is a great analyst out there who's got a great subscription newsletter, uh, down 28% after hours, issued negative Q3 pre-announcement. So not all good on the networking front. Uh, Acme Packet, it's a real company. Um, <laughs> the Roadrunner, so Acme Packet's down significantly. The uh, ticker symbol is APKT, they're down 25%. So. Um, well, that's after hours. You look at the after hours number down uh, 25%. So they're up for the day, but after hours, because they announced after the bell, um, the negative earnings. So again, I reported, and the Juniper guy was, you can see the Juniper guy was very, uh, not combative, but he was definitely edgy because I reported on Saturday that Juniper laid off 3% of its staff, which they confirmed they laid, had layoffs, but would not confirm my number of 300, which put it around 3% of their overall company. Um, I thought he was a bit defensive. Three, he got a little bit defensive. Well, he's on the shtick about, you know, he's a Microsoft guy, he knows the deal. He's been beating around the block, but you know, he's report for Bob Mooley, a great executive. I like, I like Juniper, but you know what? They definitely would not confirm the 300 number, and 300 is a lot of people. Um, to lay off, so it's newsworthy and enough. No one picked it up. The only one who picked up the story about Juniper laying off 3% of their staff was CRN, Computer Reseller News, and they're the only ones who picked up Wall Street Journal. Nobody picked it up because the Juniper PR machine absolutely denied the layoffs and actually tried to circumvent my report by saying that they're actually adding headcount. So I don't know who to believe. I know for a fact that I've confirmed, and Juniper's confirmed, 300 people were laid off and their PR team would not admit the 300, but actually try to spin it to the Wall Street Journal and Kara Swishers of the world that they're actually gaining headcount. So, so wild kind of kind of shaky PR on Juniper's side, but my point is they're retooling. Juniper's retooling. I uh, love their story. Acme packets down. Problems in the networking business. And Dave, however. The shining light in the networking business is HP. HP's doing very extremely well, and the news today from HP is that they promoted Bethany Mayer officially as Senior Vice President and General Manager of the networking group. That'll be up on siliconangle.com. She was really? on theCUBE at HP Discover. Um, so HP doing really, really well in the networking area. We've had them on theCUBE, Gantier, Jim Gantier, VP of Marketing. Um, well, congratulations Mike to Bethany. Bannock. Uh, um, I'm actually very impressed with her. She's, you and I met her um, over a year ago uh, out at HP. Very understated, very smart, has a technical background, but also you know, very strong marketeer, has been in the networking business, obviously has the confidence of Dave Donatelli, the senior vice president and general manager of the enterprise server storage and networking division. Yeah. Uh, so that's a big, big promotion for her. Um, I think she did a great job of marketing converged infrastructure. That was her baby, really did a fantastic job there. Crazy day in the market yeah. today, John. The Dow was down, you know, big early. This it, is Bethany right now. You're looking at Bethany Mayer right now. She is 
uh, was on theCUBE. Um, she was a marketing executive now, and she took the interim spot as a general manager for the networking division, Dave, because um, Marius Haas left the company to join KKR. Now, Marius Haas was in corp ran corporate development for HP, was responsible for the EDS merger, ran that thing end-to-end, uh, -end, did the whole integration, acquisition integration, and he came from Compaq. So Bethany Mayer, rising star at HP. Let's see what she can, she's a junior executive growing and now a senior vice president. Let's see what she can do at HP. And who knows, maybe she could be one of the ones promoted from within. Yeah, well, I mean, it's rare when somebody's uh, named acting anything to then get the job, right? Yeah, she earned it. Yeah, I think that's um, And she's got technical chops, so we, yes, when we exactly. talk to her, she's got yeah. a technical background, yeah, so. And, and, and I, it's, the other thing, Bethany's savvy, and she knows that uh, the networking group inside of, of HP is a good place to be right now. It's hot, and so uh, we wish, wish her the best. As I was saying, John, crazy day in the market today. It was way down, the Dow was way down early. The NASDAQ's been up all day. The tech has been up, with the one exception being Apple, although it did rebound at the close. Um, ended up only down uh, two points, a half a percentage point off. Uh, you called that um, Apple down, of course, because no iPhone 5, iPhone 4S is a sort of Band-Aid stopgap product, but still a good product. $600, it damn well better be. <laughs> and, uh, and we're here at Oracle Open World, uh, live, 2011, covering all the angles. Um, we got David Flynn coming up at uh, the, the bottom of the hour. Uh, I see David Floyer bopping around, wondering what, uh, what he's been kicking around. Been out talking to Oracle practitioners, getting the inside scoop, so we should maybe Grab him for a minute, see what's up with him. And it's up uh, to you, unless you want to take a quick break and come back for great. some news. Right, you want to take a, let's take a break and come back for some news. So let's just do a reset real quick and come back to um, where we, you and I will talk about what's going on with Apple and some of the news. Okay, great.